Juventus si parte, buon divertimento con il Juventus Inter, la tredicesima giornata, c'è il campionato di Serie A, ancora Filip, Kostic, arrivano tutti gli altri come dei treni, Kostic vuole aprire dall'altra parte, va Filip, Kostic, Kostic dentro il pallone, deviazione, la Juventus è in vantaggio, 52 c'è minuto, Andrea Rabiot, il Simonetta dopo la cavalcata meravigliosa di Filip Kostic, Juve in vantaggio, Andrea Rabiot, terzo gol in campionato. As one of the traditional powerhouses of European football, Juventus have always been the subject of intense interest and scrutiny. Today is no different as the Italian giants experience a period of considerable transition and change. In this interview, we will talk to the club's Chief Marketing and Communications Officer, Mike Armstrong, about the club's desire to establish a sustainable business model and how, as a club and sport, football can retain its relevance and popularity in the modern world. My name is Ali Drew and this is A Moment With. Mike, how are you? Very good, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. I'm excited to be here. We're obviously walking through the tunnel where so many famous, famous players have walked through. And about to go out onto the pitch, does it, that feeling of being in the stadium ever sort of get tiresome? Do you ever get over that? <laughs> no, it's a surreal feeling. It's a, it's a, a special moment. And I mean, today it's going to be so unusually quiet. Uh, so for me, that'll, that'll hit Yeah, all. very strange for you. Yeah, and just stepping out by the pitch into this stadium. I mean, it almost takes your breath away. It's, it's spectacular. It's massive. And it's just, I mean, I, can't, I don't even think I've got a word for it. It's, it's beautiful. And just to, so to talk about you, what's the biggest thing you've learned about being here? I think what hits you in the face right away, especially being a North American, is you come here and you see what fandom is from a European football perspective. I mean, not to knock on NBA or NFL or MLB, you have hardcore fans there. But the comparison to, I'd say, the percentage of European football fans that like, live for these clubs and the players, uh, the fans are at the center of, of it all. And you feel that right away if your eyes are open. What would you say you've sort of learned, you know, throughout your career, you would, you would admit to this, that maybe early on you took on jobs and roles that were maybe a little bit beyond your capabilities. Do you feel that that set you up perfectly for this role here? Yeah, absolutely. It helped. I mean, growing up in a small town in, a, in a, a smaller market, I mean, I was able to work for big international companies, but in a small market. And so by nature of that, you get much more responsibility. I also grew up wanting to be an athlete. I come from an athlete family. And so the way I approach work is very much in that way. I work hard during the day, but then I also study and I practice a lot. I read everything I can. I listen to podcasts. I meet people at conferences to better myself and then help uh, the company. What would you say is the best thing about your job? Uh, I mean, I love that I get to work on a product that ultimately people care so much about. I mean, I've spent a lot of my career working in consumer packaged goods. I mean, people like them, um, but they don't love them the same way as they, they love uh, Juventus. And so being able to work with such a like, hardcore, passionate group of fans and thinking of new ways to make them happy is, uh, is really exciting. Perfect. Well, are you ready for your interview? Yes, absolutely. Let's, Let's go, go and sit down. Thank you. So, Mike, as we discussed earlier, the club is going through a lot of changes. It's a transitional time. What do you think is the need for the, the sustainable business model going forward for the club? And not just for the club, but do you see it as an indication as a sort of a wider issue for Italian football? So new economic models for Juventus isn't uh, unique to the organization. If you look at most uh, European football clubs, they need to change the model right now. We have these big macroeconomic trends like investment coming from outside, uh, new ownership. Uh, we've got um, player salaries that are changing, TV broadcast landscape shifting. Uh, young uh, customers, young fans are really consuming the game in different ways. And so as a result, everyone right now is looking at is the economic model right? Also, we're coming out of some tough years. Most clubs suffered really during COVID. So 2022, 20 to 2022 were tough years. Uh, and so we're also, uh, like most clubs, coming out of this tough time. You mentioned that the young fans and how they're changing their way of, of watching and supporting football. Traditionally, they used to support a team. Um, but now we're starting to see trends where they support 
a global star, so they follow the player rather than a, the traditional fans who support a club. How are Juventus sort of dealing with that, counteracting that? Yeah, so I see it as additive. I don't see it as like one fighting with the other. If you look at the European uh, digital ecosystem of the clubs, they're growing. The players' ecosystems are growing. And so I see both as moving forward as opposed to one negating the other. And so um, if I look at it as a trend, I also don't see it as something that's, that's new. Um, if you think about decades ago, we always had our star player, like the, the player that we wanted to follow, whether that player was on our on our club or not, uh, it, was, uh, it was of interest. And so I don't think the solution is trying to stop people from following stars because that's what's good for the total industry. For me, it's more so um, we're in this attention economy and we need to find out how do we, in the little time that we have with our fans, make sure that they're engaging and feeling an emotional connection with the club and the brand uh, and not only the players. How important is digital media to all this and staying relevant in the modern world? Yeah, so from a relevancy perspective, it's, uh, it's critical. I mean, I tend to oversimplify, but if I look at, I mean, years ago, 30 years ago, we had a TV set, we had 30 stations, we had a radio. You fast forward to today, and we've got unlimited content at our fingertips all the time. And so, really, football shouldn't look at it as teams fighting with teams or football fighting against other sports. I mean, we're competing with entertainment as a category. And so people might want to watch football, they might want to watch gaming or an influencer. And so we have to be hyper relevant. And so if we look at Juventus, I mean, our fan base is 93% uh, uh, outside of Italy. So we've got this really strong, important Italian core, and then the rest of it that's all over the world. And so we've got six plus different languages, we've got all ages. And so recently what we did was we built the Juventus Creator Lab, which is this new production studio, which has um, influencers with content creators, with social media managers, with uh, producers and editors, but everybody essentially together looking at how do we create content in a different way to give more transparency and to appease this like really diverse audience. And so in the last six months even, we've launched two Amazon Prime documentaries, uh, several YouTube original formats, the first football TikTok miniseries. Uh, so today, for instance, we had freestylers descend into Torino from all over the world to compete to be Juventus's uh, first ever freestyler. Uh, we had our players as like celebrity judges, uh, and this was another way for us to look at how do we try to be relevant, give transparency, uh, to um, and, and new content to our very uh, wide and varied fan base all over the world. I mean, it does sound like Juventus are doing a lot to evolve. Do you feel like football as a whole, in its traditions, maybe stop it evolving as it should? Yeah, I mean, I think people don't like change, right? It's a psychology. Uh, within football, I see people are very precious about the sport. It's a beautiful sport, and so change is difficult. If you look at recently, we've seen changes with respect to the VAR or um, cameras in players' uh, dressing rooms. And at first, those things were jarring, but people have gotten used to them, or most, maybe. Uh, so I think change is going to continue to happen. It has to. It's just going to be tough, and the fans are going to have to be at the center of whatever the changes are. Do you feel like you're here at the club building an off-the-pitch team that's going to push the club into a brighter future? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Juventus has been around for over 125 years. We've got uh, family ownership actually this year uh, for 100 years. And so we can plan long term. Like we have this stable um, core that is built by the family, whereas some other clubs are seeing foreign ownership. Uh, for us, I see that as a huge advantage. The team that's in place now is ready to go. We've built a multi-year plan and so we're, we're full speed ahead. So all the changes, all the transitions are for, for the long-term greater good for the club? Absolutely. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for your time, Mike. It's oh, great talking to you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.